out. Okay. Yep, we're rolling. So okay. What you say. Hello, Steve K zero G U Z. Oh, so you're having internet access issues. Yeah, that's a different thing. I'll let the group know and just keep trying. Uh, that's pro probably it. Might be a modem reset. Are you on Comcast? Oh, I used to have those, yeah. But you might try a reset on those. So sometimes that works, but um, anyway. Yeah. Um, all right, well, well, it looks like Clark is gonna start off first anyway, and then uh, I'll tell him you're still going to get a connection. And hopefully we'll get you in there before you're up. I'm supposed to be uh, last, by the way, and Bob Cutter's supposed to A0 be. zero MF. And I'm sure Bob's ready and prepped to go, right, Bob? Sure, anytime. Wow. Well, there's Susie. There's Susie now. So uh, Susie's on with her iPad. There's Bob. Yeah, we um, um we can't. Get oh, on. I was just talking. Yeah. I uh, I'm talking on two meters. So Bob, Bob and Sue uh, lost their internet connection. Hopefully temporarily. Uh, Brian can't get in. So um, there's a couple people still working on that. <laughs> so my friend made it. Hi, Gary. Yeah, I switched computers. Hey. Oh, 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 there, there they are. Hi, Sue. <laughs> I'm connected by, via my cellular connection with my iPad. I, we, our Wi-Fi wasn't working. Right, this is my K0MF. I let him. Uh, you're still trying to get it. And, and you're the people I called in case I got lost. Is that, <laughs> is, that, is, that, oh. is that Christine? Who is that down there in the corner? I see Jess in my down corner. Uh, I see somebody that looks like Christine with a set of headphones on. Wake your eyes, Christine. Hi, Bob. Yeah, I was just there. adjusting my audio. All right, she's got it. <laughs> uh, N0THY, still trying to get in too. I can only see nine people at a time on my iPad. Oh yeah, I can see tw uh, 20, uh, five by five today. On your we iPad? We got 20, 20, 21. Yeah, I see 21 as well. Hello, Fred. Hello, hello. How's everyone? Very well. Hey, Greg. Hey, Fred. How are you, man? Good, good. Just it's quite a storm we had moved through here earlier. Man, was it blowing yeah. twenty eight mile an hour winds? No, it was pretty pretty stout here in Basalt. Yeah, it's calm now. It's nice. Put this mm. okay, I'm standing up. Put it over there on your desk. So are we are we still waiting for uh, Brian or somebody? It's it's blowing in here in Aspen. It started to blow again. Just I talked to Kevin on the radio and he said his uh, internet was like dial up. So he would probably not. He probably wouldn't want to be here. He can uh, he can dial in on the phone if he just wants to listen. Unless he has, uh, uh, oh, unless he has an internet phone, but uh, there are phone numbers uh, uh, that go with this uh, account. You see it when you get a regular, uh, the usual kind of invitation, the automatic. Uh, you want me to give you the phone number? I think I can bring it up. No, don't bother. Kevin's not here, so if if you want to give it to him, give it to him on eight eight. He's probably listening there. Kevin, wasn't Kevin in earlier? Yes. I I yeah, he was. Oh, oh okay. was he? Maybe he, was, maybe he disappeared. He said his, his internet was really kind of flaky. Yeah, our, our, my internet is totally gone. Well, let's get this underway here. <laughs> All right, with Fred's recommendation, I'm ready to start the meeting. So, uh, First thing that we normally do is just do a round robin introduction. And uh, I, I guess I'm, 
to have to kind of play this by ear because usually as I start going around, the uh, faces change and uh, all sorts of stuff happens. So I got to kind of remember who's up there. But we're going to start with Bob, KI0G. Go ahead and introduce. Oh, by the way, I'm Clark Eckert, K3, and I live in Placida. Uh, go ahead, Bob. Okay, Bob, KI0G, uh, in the uh, new uh, winter QTH in Moab, uh, where it's uh, bright blue sky and sunny today. <laughs> okay, Eric. Hi, I'm Eric, K0JEG, in Battlement Mesa, which we got about <clears throat> two tenths of an inch of rain overnight. And um, I do have a quick show and tell uh, if there's time. All right, uh, SRG is next. Steve? Hi, okay, S Steve, <clears throat> zero SRG in Aspen, and there's another Steve right below me. <laughs> On your screen. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Richard. Uh, Hi, uh, Richard K4ULD. Um, in my winter home, but uh, turns out to be all year round at the moment in Florida. Sanford, okay. Florida. All right. Uh, Rick, uh, KB0AHR. Rick, you're muted. There we go. Let's see here. This is Rick, KB0AHR in Rifle, Colorado. That's it. Don, uh, W0CTX. Hi, right, this is Don, W0CTX, uh, Portable 8. I'm up in northern upper Michigan. The grid is EN67, which is, or 57, which is pretty rare. And uh, I've been running some FT8 up here. Uh, we'll be gone from the area for about four months and then returning out to Glenwood. So, um, Anyway, happy to be on and uh, also have a, a, a nice big uh, 40 meter delta loop up and operating right. at 20, 20, 15, and 10. Yeah. Looking forward to coming back to Colorado though. Yes. What sounds It's uh, Houghton County, Michigan, H O U G H T O N, and near uh, Keweenaw County, where I've been doing some portable work. There's uh, E N. 57 up there that's very rare and I've gone up and set up portable of FT8 because uh, I don't think there's any hams up there. It's mostly Lake Superior. Yeah, you're Michigan Tap, huh? Yeah, near there, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jess, W6CKC. Hi, Jess, CKC, and I'm in Basalt. And um, if Kevin gets back on, we have an update to give everybody about, if time permits, about the uh, Aspen All-Star League. So we're making progress on it. But good to see everybody on this morning. All right, Dick, KX6B. Yeah, good evening, or good morning, rather. Uh, uh, this is uh, Dick in uh Used to be sunny California. It's cloudy and sprinkled overnight. And uh, we're in San Jose. So, uh, uh, greetings to everyone. And uh, back to you. Okay, Ken and Betty, KB0HP, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, Ken here, KB0HP and Rifle, and my other half. And Betty. KD0YDH rifle also. Oh, okay. The next person I have is Gregory. I don't know your call though. That's not yeah, Gregory Pickrell here, uh, Alpha Alpha Zero Tango Lima. I'm in Basalt and um, resuming um, <laughs> membership in this grand club of you, uh, of you guys. I want to get back in. I've been going to school and uh, graduating here pretty soon. And uh, I uh, want to get back into radio, so here I am. Good to see you, Gregory. Thank All you. All right, Steve, K0GUZ. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, really? Huh. You're muted. No, he's not muted. His, mic His microphone is not connected. Okay. I get the sh uh, shoulder shrug, which says, uh, I don't know what the problem is. I'm working on it. So we'll get back to you <laughs> later. 
Uh, Gary, Gary's next. Yeah, I'm Gary, AB0TI. I'm from Aurora, Colorado. Uh, we got a little bit of the same weather over here, wind gusting to 25, 30. Well, they're not supposed to go in all day, but uh, we'll survive it. We have so far. Good. Mike, K0MF. I am, I am K0MF, Mike. Uh, I'm located in the uh, southern end of Glenwood Springs uh, in the Iron Bridge area. David, WB6JUI. Good, good morning, every good morning, everyone. So nice Thank to you see you and time. hear you. And uh, it's got a beautiful sunny day here. Te present temperature is 55 degrees. And uh, so nice to see everyone. And back to you, Clark. Okay, thank you, David. Uh, Joe. Joe, I think your microphone is muted. It says it's muted in your little rectangle. Can't hear you. There you go. ACOCF, Joe. All right, great. Hey, welcome aboard, Joe. <laughs> Sue, Sue and Bob, you're next. Uh, this is Sue N0DBY in Glenwood Springs. Um, we're still trying to get our internet to work, but uh, right now we're using the iPad on the cell connection. So there's here comes Bob. Yeah, uh, no problem. Uh, I probably won't be able to do my little anvil points no, we may get presentation. It we may get it up by then. It looks like one, one system may be working here. Maybe they reset or something, but... Uh, we were getting no internet at all. Okay, that's it. Okay, next is Fred. K0VK. Oh, K0VK, yes. Uh, <clears throat> Fred, I'm in Woody Creek. The sun's out. Uh, come on, spring. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Amen. Uh, Christine, ALP. Go ahead, Christine. Hi, I'm Christine K0ALT in Peach Valley near Silt. Brennan, uh, you're next. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I'm just barely able to get on here. Uh, my uh, uh, screen here's got that little beach ball uh, running around in the in there, but uh, I am at least able to get on. It looks like, and uh, wasn't too sure. If uh, anybody could hear me so anyway i'm uh, just want to say uh, hello to everybody and uh hopefully uh we can uh get everything to work here for this meeting uh back to uh net or whatever control <laughs> I, I i think that's brian i was trying to get brian. <laughs> this is gonna be too loud. Can you come on now? yeah i got you clark um Glad to be here at the meeting. Um, look, good to see everybody. It's been a little while since I've been on, so thought I'd show up today. Had a technical issue earlier trying to use Windows, so off to the Mac I am. <laughs> well, I don't blame you on that one. All right, Kevin, uh, uh, KD0MA, but you're, oh, okay, you, you've uh, unmuted. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay, uh, it's Kevin in Spring Valley near Glenwood. Uh, I have an impaired internet connection uh, this morning, so I may drop out at any time. Okay, thanks for the warning. Uh, Chuck N0 uh, NHJ is next. Good morning, uh, Chuck in Lakewood, Washington. It's uh, 43 degrees and cloudy up here, so good to see everybody. Okay. Um, well, it's working now. Jeremy is next, uh, but Jeremy's uh, microphone is muted. Uh, can you uh, hear me, Jeremy? Hello, where's the Jeremy? Jeremy, you're muted if you can hear. Jeez. 
Okay, well, he's probably away from the computer. Uh, did I miss anybody? Hey, Clark, speak a bit closer to your microphone. You're a bit muffled. Uh, is this better right now? Yes. This would be, it should be uh, no, it wasn't. It should be interesting when I'm trying to do my presentation. Uh, <laughs> it gets far enough away so I can see what I'm sending. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let me look at the agenda here for a second. Yeah, I've done uh, introductions. Uh, uh, Bob, KI0J, uh, was first on the list, Bob. You want to do your uh, Moab uh, race? Uh, sure, be ha I'll be happy to. Okay, sure. go. Okay, go. Can we mute everyone? Um, if I could make a suggestion, um, everyone, I don't know if anyone can hear me right now, but um, um, It'd be good that everyone that isn't speaking mutes, and that way uh, the speaker doesn't jump away from the speaker every time someone makes a noise. That would be helpful. Did anyone hear that? Yes. The host can, yes. the host can mute everybody if he oh, wants. I didn't know if I was. Hey, I tried to unmute, but okay. Here I, I'm going back. I I think the uh, the moderator could do that automatically, but we let's let's do it. Let's make it on the individual participants better. Um, okay, uh, this is uh, we're going to have a little uh, a little session this morning on an event that I had the pleasure of uh, helping out uh, with here last month. Uh, a little background on how I got involved in this. I was on the uh, local repeater, which is a uh, uh, which is linked uh, north and south all the way through Utah. And, and uh, I was talking to Ham, and I assumed he was local, but as it turned out, he was up near Salt Lake. Uh, but when he heard I was in Moab, he uh, indicated that they had a, uh, an endurance run uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, and uh, they didn't have uh, any hams from, uh, uh, from Moab participating. And would I be willing to, and would I like to, and I volunteered. So that's uh, that's how I ended up being part of the, the Moab 240 endurance run. Uh, it's been going on for quite a few years. Um, let's go with the, the numbers anyway. Everybody, everybody likes numbers, uh, and we'll start out with that to kind of get you an idea of what, uh, what this thing is. I had never, uh, I've been kind of on the periphery of the Leadville and the uh, Hard Rock 100 uh, in Colorado, but this one is... Uh, uh, 240 miles uh, nonstop, uh, nonstop in the sense that uh, the runners uh, are running all the time except when they elect to take a rest period. Uh, there's a maximum time for the, for the uh, run, which is 112 hours, uh, and uh, they have to, have to complete the uh, run within that period of time. And there are also um, aid stations scattered throughout the uh, throughout the course, and there are minimum or, or maximum times between those aid stations. So not only do you have to be finished in the, under 111, 112 hours, you've got to make it from point A to point B with in X number of hours. In other words, you're out. Uh, the field is limited to 200 runners. The entry fee, as you see, is pretty substantial. Um, Stephen asked earlier on one, when we were talking about this, what were the prize? Well, there's there's really no prize other than other than uh, bragging rights, which apparently, what not apparently, is a very big deal. Uh, and so that's that's what it is. So you have serious serious people involved in this uh, event and a uh, uh, fascinating uh, kind of a cross section. Just a bit of trivia. Uh, the elevation gain and corresponding elevation loss in the entire run was uh, 29,000 plus feet, and Everett's itself is 29,000 feet. So you get kind of an idea as to uh, as to what we're uh, what we're covering in there. Uh, here, the uh, 2020 winner completed the uh, the race in 61 hours, about half of the uh, uh, of the uh, allowed maximum. 
And the best ever time was 57 hours, some uh, about three or four years ago by a, uh, a uh, school teacher from Colorado. As in the past, if any of you have any questions on this thing, wave your hand or, Susie, did you have a question? I guess not, okay. All right, here is basically the course. Now, um, those of you that are familiar with the Moab area, we go, the course starts or the race or the run, it is, a, they call it run and a race. It's a, it's a race in the sense that you're, you're trying for your best time, but it's more of an endurance contest than anything else. Uh, let me see if I can find my uh, cursor here. There we go. Okay, it starts up here at the, basically the, uh, the bridge across the, the Colorado River going into Moab. And then it continues down the, uh, to this area down in here. If you're familiar with Newspaper Rock, um, on the uh, road down to uh, Monticello. That's basically the southernmost point of the, of the race. And then it continues back up north and eventually it crosses the, uh, uh, the highway here at the LaSalle Junction. Those of you that are familiar with that, that's the road that, that goes over to uh, Dove Creek and over into Colorado. And then from there, it continues on up to Geyser Pass, Porcupine Rim, and drops then down into the Colorado uh, Canyon and uh, comes back to Moab. So this is the this is basically the uh, the course. Okay, the ham radio part of it. That's what we're here for. These are the antennas at the base station that was located in an RV park there at the uh, at the uh, entrance to Moab. Uh, we have here there the the radio system consisted of. Uh, two two meter repeaters on the uh, ridges kind of south and uh, west uh, south and west of Moab a 450 backbone that linked the two uh, repeaters into this this base station and also uh, they were experimenting with uh, NVIS near vertical incident uh, system if you're familiar with that that's a uh, uh, an antenna that basically it's a high frequency antenna that shoots the RF basically straight up in the air and it reflects down and it's desirable or it becomes useful for emergency communication and uh, uh, can take the place of the two meter. But again, you're using HF and it's used to get over mountain ranges. And that the reason they were experimenting with this is that this group this ham radio group has been asked to provide radio communication for a similar endurance run in Tahoe, uh, Nevada, California next year. And Tahoe is a very mountainous area and uh, they, they don't have a, a high point like we have down here in Moab where repeaters could be located with coverage all the way around. As it was, there were two or three uh, aid stations down in the uh, newspaper rock area, the southern part, that didn't always have good uh, coverage into the repeaters. And so uh, uh, they were experimenting with this, to, again, to provide uh, some future use to getting over the, uh, the hills that are involved. So there were two or three, uh, the station, the aid station that I was at had a uh, NBIS antenna and a couple others. And we, uh, during the uh, during the, the uh, course, there was, it wasn't constant radio traffic. We did uh, some experiments and trying on that. It's going to work. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, the, the, uh, uh, the emergency preparedness people have established that it's a, it's a viable form of propagation and communication where you're in a uh, area that cannot be served by repeaters and, uh, and, and has uh, intervening terrain that keeps a uh, line of sight out from propagating. Any questions? So okay. What's the, name, what's the name of the antenna? Near vertical? Uh, no, it, it's basically T-shaped is, is what a lot of them are. Uh, and uh, it's uh, generally, a ver generally a dipole type affair that may have drooping ends to uh, to kind of uh, bring the lobe into more of a, a, a single uh, lobe in the center rather than two lobes uh, on the uh, 
two ends of the dipole. Got it. It's, it emanates vertically, but uh, what what bands were they using? For, to uh, we were we were experimenting with uh, forty and eighty meters. Okay. And I think probably uh, forty meters is going to be the uh, one uh, that'll be implemented. Uh, a couple of reasons. One, obviously, the antenna is considerably well half the size, basically, and which is easier to erect. And uh, the other, it seemed to be. Uh, it just seemed to work better than 80 meters, but we had, uh, I should say 75 meters because these were sideband uh, connections. We also uh, experimented with uh, two meter sideband, which uh, had better propagation than uh, two meter direct. Uh, this is an ongoing thing. These, these guys have been, uh, and I have been refining this system over several years, and it's a kind of a, a constant uh, 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 process of experimenting with new things and uh, trying to, to trying to do it. But I don't think uh, two meter sideband is going to be the uh, the answer. It isn't that much better than uh, uh, two meter FM, and um, it doesn't have well, it didn't have the ability to uh, utilize the repeaters. And I think the NBIS is going to be probably uh, better as a backbone, a backbone for uh, Tahoe and uh, uh, that sort of thing. This is the headquarters trailer down there at the RV park at the edge. Uh, basically, the uh, the guy that kind of puts this together and runs it is uh, is the farthest one in the back back there, N seven R T G Ed Ed Jones. And he's the one that invited me in and to uh, uh, to participate. Let's talk about a little bit this the big screen that you will have another shot of it here in a minute. Uh, this back here is a live display of the runners as they're as they're on the course. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that we would do, we would get uh, first of all the aid station that I was at had no internet and no cell phone coverage. So the only way we could communicate was through the uh, ham radio and basically through the two meter repeater system. We would get inquiries as to where number runner number 127. Or, and uh, one query, inquiry I had was that, can you locate the father? This was about two o'clock in the morning. Can you locate the father of uh, runner 87? He's a white in a white BMW, probably sleeping in it in uh, with Texas license plates. So I went out and proceeded to go through the uh, 30 or 40 cars that were parked at in the area where I was. This was an area where the uh, the race course crossed a highway and it was a good point for people to drive to and uh, meet their runners or talk to their runners or anywhere else. But the this reason for this inquiry was that his son had dropped out at one of the previous uh, uh, aid stations and that they were bringing him down from the aid station to basically the road that goes into the Needles Overlook. If you're, again, if you're familiar to the Moab, Moab area, that's a road that takes off uh, to your right as you're headed down to Monticello that goes into the uh, Needles area. And uh, so we were able to, to uh, I was able to find the guy and the father and uh, coordinate and, and he ended up going down there and picking up his son. Anyway, that was the sort of thing we had. But uh, again, it was important to be able to uh, uh, find where these runners were, the course, at any time. And it also took a great deal of work away from the aid stations. In the past, they would have to go in and physically uh, record the bib numbers of the runners as they came through and then report that back to uh, to headquarters, if you will. Uh, this way it's done automatically. This person right here in the foreground uh, works for the spot company. And his screen here is the same as this, but he has the ability, the ability to go in inter and interrogate the various spot transmitters, which can give the speed and the average speed and uh, the exact uh, location of, of, the, uh, of the spot or the runner and a little more detail than appears on the uh, on the live screen. Here's a here's another shot of the live screen. This was available online uh, to anybody that wanted it. This was about oh let me see uh, probably about the end of the first day. The runners are almost the lead runner is down here at the bottom. 
is almost to the southernmost point of the race. And these are them scattered along. Off here on the right is the uh, uh, is is basically the milepost where they are, and uh, and their various uh, locations as they're going along. This is real time. Uh, well, real time in the sense that the spot reports every ten minutes. Uh, so it'll send a. Uh, it's kind of well, it's a GPS is what it is uh, it, that uh, the individual runners wear. It is not a, does not have two-way capability. Those of you that are familiar with the spot that is marketed to uh, RVers and hikers, it has a, a, a help and an I'm okay button and that sort of thing uh, that you can actually send a message out. Uh, this, this particular spot is a uh, bare bones one. It doesn't have that capability. Here are the, here are the spots. Uh, lined up on the table to be given to the run runners the morning of the start of the race. In other words, a uh, uh, little glitch there. They got uh, the numbers out of sequence, but we, they got that straightened out quickly. Anyway, there were 200 of them, obviously, and uh, they were passed out, uh, tested to make sure that they were working and turned on. Uh, and they stay on uh, during the duration of the race. This is the spot itself. They, they also have a sleeve. That's what this blue blue thing you see that fits on your, uh, basically your upper arm above the elbow. And uh, the, the spot itself, uh, the device is inserted in it and uh, that's where it stays for the, uh, for the duration. When we would get a runner that would drop out, uh, that we were, our responsibility was go in, make sure that the uh, uh, spot was turned off uh, and uh, get a con confirmation of that, that from the headquarters. And then this spot was turned over to the, the captain of the aid station. In other words, the manager of the aid station, and they were responsible for uh, uh, you know, keeping them secure and turning them in at the end. Frequency of the spot is, uh, is uh, shown there at the top to the satellite. Oh, to satellite, okay. Was there a question? Okay. You answered uh, it. it. You answered it, Bob. It's, uh, that frequency is pretty much direct line of sight. So you're talking about a satellite. I told totally oh, yeah, you. Yeah, it's all, it's satellite. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, can you hear me, Bob? Bob? Yeah. I had another question. Uh-huh. Okay. If you hear me, okay. Um, yes. What was that way back when, when you're showing the software, is that a commercial product or did somebody write it custom or? Uh, what, what's the, how, how, how this, where does software? You mean the live recording? Um, no, the, uh, the software that was run on the computer systems. I don't think it's custom. I, it, I think it's available for any, any type of race, including, uh, you know, it, it grew out of, uh, Bob Reninga's and, uh, APRS is what, he's the one that basically started it. And there are commercial ones out there now to, uh, track uh, people on, on any kind of a race, uh, be it uh, bicycle, uh, running. Uh, I don't know the name of the software, but it wasn't specifically designed for this race, no. Okay, it, prob thank you. it probably was obtained through the spot, the company that manufactures and distributes the spot device. This is uh, basically the camp at the beginning of, uh, of the race. Uh, the runners have to. Uh, uh, nothing is furnished by the uh, the people at the of uh, the race other than hot food, which is available uh, 24 seven at the aid stations. And we're talking serious food. We're talking bacon, sausage, eggs. Uh, you know, hash browns. Any time, any amount. It's incredible what they. Uh, and I guess that's what you get for that uh, that entry fee. But uh, uh, they were. Each of the uh, aid stations had hot food available 24-7 uh, that they were there. And uh, the runners have to carry their own gear, but they do have the ability to put together what are called drop bags. And these are bags that the race officials transport. They will take, for instance, this one pile of, well, we'll, we'll get to, well, let's go to that now. Here's one of the uh, one of the individual ones. This, if you could read the sign in the background there, that's the name of a particular aid station. 
So uh, let's say I, you know, I, I, uh, this is my aid box down here, the black one with the orange top, got my name on it and everything else. And I've got a change of clothes or something in there. Or wh I don't know what else, but anyway, I, I want to get that halfway through the race. So I put it in the pile that goes to the aid station where I want to pick it up. And then these people will, after the race starts, they will take these out and distribute them to the various aid stations. So that when I pull into this aid station at two o'clock in the morning, uh, my uh, black, box, black box with the orange top should be there. And it was there. We had, we had very few boxes. In fact, they didn't have any boxes that were lost. Uh, so they had uh, the logistics were really, really impressive. Several of these aid stations had a half dozen or so cots in a, uh, in a tent that were uh, available on a uh, first come first serve basis for the runners. As a, as a practical matter, they didn't, they didn't sleep that much. Uh, several of them actually uh, slept by the side of the road for an hour or so. Uh, the others would uh, pull into the uh, aid station and uh, uh, get basically a cat nap. The aid stations also had medical personnel there. Uh, two or more EMTs or RNs were available in all of them. We had a couple of physicians scattered throughout and everything else like that. So these uh, these people were available if they had. We had no uh, no medical emergencies that uh, that I was aware of, at least not serious ones. There were two uh, basically ATVs that were outfitted with uh, litters that could carry people that were on the uh, on the track and were following uh, the people. They did evacuate a bicyclist who uh, had was hurt in an accident and they did load that bicyclist up and take them out to a out to a highway where they could be picked up. Uh, the uh, the course, the race course or the endurance course did uh, share some of the trail with uh, uh, with bicycle areas, but as a, as a practical matter, they were pretty much on their own. Some of the areas was were uh, shared with ATV uh, uh, events too, or AT ATV vehicles, but not a great deal. Here's here is one of the repeater sites. This is the one is located at what's called Anticline. Overlook. That's basically a high point that's north of the Needles Overlook. Uh, if I step around and uh, uh, stand by closer to the uh, to the uh, uh, solar panels and look uh, up to the northwest and stand on my tiptoes, I can see the uh, blue evaporation ponds in Moab, uh, outside of Moab on the Potash Road. Those of you that are familiar with that. Uh, the LaSalle's off there to the right. Uh, the course did have a change because they had early snow in the LaSalle's and they rerouted, rerouted a portion of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, of the course to uh, a place at a lower elevation. We did the night that I spent, I spent one night shift, one 24 hour shift at my uh, aid station. And that night we were, we did have snow on, on Geyser Pass which was uh, two aid stations uh, upstream from us uh, anyway, uh, and, and they did have snow at that time. Bob, question, what was the temperature and the weather like during this course of the race? Well, it varied. It probably we had a high probably in the neighborhood of mid 60s, down in the valley, down in, the, in, the, uh, in this area that we're looking at right now, probably in the 70s, but we were down in, it was freezing uh, at night. Uh, actually, it froze at night at the uh, aid station where I was. So it was into the, uh, into the low 30s. So we had a, you know, had a variation of probably 50 degrees over the uh, thing. And this is, this is another reason why you've got those drop boxes and drop bags is that uh, uh, you know, they may have a clothing requirement. They, there were certain minimum clothing that uh, they had to have in their packs before they left. They had to have sufficient water. They had to have uh, some sort of a rain poncho and uh, a rain pants and a basically a shelter or a, an emergency blanket. And they had to have that with them and they had to carry it with them through that. They couldn't rely on the drop box for that. That was the minimum requirement that they had to have. This is a view, uh, again, looking from the, uh, uh, the anticline uh, repeater up uh, toward the north to, uh, 
to Moab. Moab is kind of, uh, now you can't really see it, but it's kind of down in around this corner here. And this is basically the course that you see coming through here. And it passes down around and eventually it will uh, cross, uh, as I mentioned earlier, down near Newspaper Rock and then head back north. That's a famous bike trail right there. Yeah, that's a, that's a section of it, yes. They call it, covered a lot of one of the and Porcupine Ridge toward the end was a, is a very popular uh, bike trail too. Okay, this is the uh, uh, this is the aid station where I was at. You see the uh, the HF antenna up here, which is the NBIS, and then we had the two meter antennas and that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, this was uh, at the uh, road where the, uh, uh, the highway crosses or the uh, the uh, interchange for the LaSalle uh, turnoff. And this is, uh, it was known as Road 46 was the name that it was, uh, that it was listed by. And this was the way it was, you know, we were out in the flats. As I mentioned the other, that night when I, there were, I think I counted at one time, there were 56 vehicles uh, scattered around parked in here. Uh, this, we were, again, we were totally solar uh, uh, powered. And this was, a, this was a, a self uh, uh, pointing solar array. You see this small unit up here. This is again a solar array. And depending on where the sun is, in other words, if, if it's getting the most uh, voltage from this solar array here, it this motorized larger array rotates toward it. And then this is an indicator. There's a, there's a small hole, which corresponds to this bright spot in here. And the, it's an aiming device for the solar. And as long as the bright spot is in this sort of a purple colored area here, it's getting the maximum exposure for the, uh, from the sun for the, uh, the, uh, ult or for the, uh, the uh, solar panel. But it was automatic and it was kind of fascinating to watch. And I, I got a kick out of this. There's a corresponding uh, small solar panel on this side that obviously this, this is basically facing easterly, southeast. And this is basically facing uh, uh, southwest, and if uh, it is fixed, and uh, this larger panel rotates under it to according to uh, what this gets in the way of the differential voltage between these two uh, panel areas, and uh, will ro rotate to get the maximum exposure for the sun. Uh, some of the get some of the of aid stations where you had the ability and human nature being such as it is, uh, the, the people on the radio would fall asleep. This is basically a sleep box. And what it was, if I wanted to go to sleep, and I was, I were two people, there were two of us at my aid station, so it wasn't a problem. But in some of them, there were only a single radio operator. I would basically push this, uh, uh, this blue button, which turned off the audio to my radio. And uh, so I did, wasn't hearing like that, and I could actually get some sleep. If the this also had a uh, had a, a DTMF uh, decoder, which is basically what it was. And uh, if the uh, uh, if the headquarters or the net control station needed to get a hold of me, they would call me first on the repeater. If I didn't respond to that, then they would hit their call button. And I don't appear it, but the part of the device was a basically a, a handheld uh, 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 speaker, uh, megaphone type thing, and it put a, a hellacious roar and uh, the audio saying, you know, come on, wake up, get on the air. So uh, it, it it was not a problem to. Uh, and then if, when I was through sleeping, I would hit the green button and I would go back uh, into regular audio and everything else. This is one of the devices that this ham group has developed over the year to uh, to to solve a problem. And because, uh, you know, they might be away from the radio. They may be over at the aid station. They'd be over uh, somewhere else uh, than they're needed. If this is the ability to uh, to really get their attention. It's just it's simply between between fits between the audio of the of the radio and the and the speaker and uh, mutes the speaker when it does it probably actually goes to the headphone jack is what it does and uh, that mutes the speaker and then when uh, uh, when it, it it it's off it the speaker go ahead with its regular audio. This was probably the most popular thing. This 
this uh, fire pit was going 24 uh, seven and was the kind of the gathering spot near the, uh, basically the, uh, the cook shack and the aid station and everything else. Very popular. I, uh, I really uh, I enjoyed it. And of course, like anything in the desert, you can't beat the night sky. So we did have just beautiful view of uh, uh, the Milky Way. And that's, of course, that's Orion's belt that we're looking at there. So any questions? OK, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Bob. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, Bob, great, great presentation. Uh, uh, next, uh, if I have, I guess I have the uh, microphone and I better keep my head close to it. Uh, on the agenda, we have, let's see, Bob. <clears throat> okay, I think it's Jess, W6CKC. Uh, you want to take it, Jess? Um, the only thing I had was just an update. Is Kevin in here yet? Uh, yeah. Um, hopefully with Kevin, we just want to update that um, Kevin has ordered all the equipment for the Aspen um, All-Star node. So we're going to start putting that together, I would say, in the next three, four, seven days or something like that. So that's just an update for everybody who is... Um, has an interest in the Aspen uh, project that we are working on. Um, Kevin, any update from you? No, nothing additional. Okay, um, Clark, that's all I had. Hey, Clark, I, I have a comment. I have a comment on that. Well, which comment are you going to make? The first one or the echoes that follow? Turn, turn it off. Just move it. Su Susie's got to move her thing. I, I guess that's okay. Um, I had a comment. I, I had my uh, Linko set up all together, Jess, and I have some pictures for you, but I'm still fighting the uh, software aspect of it in the setup. So anyway, I'm going to have to talk to Pete. I talked a little bit to Frank and Fred yesterday, and haven't gotten to try everything out, but uh, I, I don't have it fully functioning, so I can uh, go into the um, node over there in uh, in the Eagle Vale area. So that's that's my comment on that. And uh, Clark, I can do my presentation too when when you get down to me on Anvil points. Oh, okay, Bob. Uh, make sure I'm not muted anymore. No, I guess I'm not. I can see. Um, Maybe Jerry uh, is next with some pictures of uh, the work he's done. Uh, at, I guess Anvil Points and, and Snowmass. Is that correct, Jerry? Speaking of which, where is N6HUQ? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, whatever it is, he's not available. And I don't think he's checked in either, so. Uh, Bob, do you uh, do you want to do what you're doing? I'm I'm anxious and ready to go with uh, what I did for the marble repeater. But if uh, you're ready to go uh, now, go ahead, Bob. God, uh, yeah, Clark. MWM. Jerry is probably having internet problems. He's in that area that was troublesome this morning. Yeah, that's probably right. Okay. What? Why don't you do yours, Clark? Okay, so um, I guess the first thing I do is share screen there. And you know, what the heck? Here we go. And do share. And we go up here from the beginning. From the beginning. Okay. Can everybody see the uh, uh, yeah, full page here for the Marble repeater, Kelly, cabin. Is anybody respond? Yep, you're up. Okay, great. Uh, I kind of wanted to uh, explain how all this came about. And, you know, back in the day when we used to have those village in breakfast, one time when we had like 20 some people, 
uh, and, it, and I'll bet it was like three years ago, we started talking about, or I, I don't know, I may have brought it up, talking about having a repeater somewhere up in the uh, marble area so that we could go off into the raggeds or up a Lead King Basin and that sort of thing. Our, uh, emergency communications around marble especially uh, during the winter when we have people in the back country up there that need to be rescued. So uh, the idea of having a, uh, a repeater up there was was uh, hatched. And uh, I, I know Al Scholz was involved in that and uh, the Kellys, uh, Bill uh, and Liam, uh, his son uh, offered their cabin up and and, uh, and Al got involved and, and uh, in, Trying to provide, uh, you know, help and and equipment, and he uh, managed to get Andre to come up with a repeater that was available for a few dollars, and I I was certainly willing to invest in it to get started. So I ended up being the owner of an analog uh, repeater, looking for a place to have a home, and so uh, <clears throat> the idea was hatched. Now, and the first thing that happens. Uh, when I get into these discussions, people ask, I hope you can see this, but where the hell is marble anyway? So let me describe it. You know, there's a turn off there, 133 in Carbondale, and then you go south uh, on 133 from Carbondale. Come on, uh, cursor. And you go down here and pass uh, Redstone, and then uh, Placida is right about here where I live. And then uh, County Road 3 turns off of 133. Now, 133 goes over McClure Pass this way. But County Road 3 goes here. And as you're approaching the Marble area, um, you, you come to the turnoff to uh, Serpentine Road, uh, which this is the, the wash for Slate Creek. And this is uh, County Road 3 coming in. And here's the turnoff. And I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. But uh, from there, you go up Serpentine Road to the Kelly Cabin, and notice you uh, <laughs> it earns its namesake. At any rate, it goes around here, and, and I think the Kelly Cabin is right there. It's not at the very top, but it's a long way up, and it's got a Tenor? good view of the. I don't care. Turkey? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. You almost here? I don't know yet. Well, whenever you get your Whoever's mic. eating turkey needs to mute his mic. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think you all know uh, that this is the Marble area here and Beaver Lake and that sort of thing. So let me move on. Uh, you're coming up County Road 3, you see the iconic mountains. And I think that's White House Mountain and Treasury Mountain. And off to the left is Sheep Mountain. Uh, <clears throat> the road to uh, County Road 3 is well uh, paved. And so uh, even uh, last week, I uh, had no problem. It was melted out. Uh, uh, when I was up there, I'll explain later, but uh, I was up there recently to retrieve a drill that I left there. Anyway, here's the turnoff, just short of uh, uh, Slate Creek. It's off to the left here, uh, and it follows up this way. Uh, but it turns to a dirt road almost immediately. And then you, you proceed uphill. Uh, this is the view of the road down below and and, uh, and uh, Marble is over in this area here. So we're going up. This, by the way, is the road up to the uh, Marble Quarry uh, in the distance. And Crystal City is up this way. And uh, I think the most ideal place for this uh, repeater would be right here on the top of Sheep Mountain, which you know, it could be run there uh, since it's a solar uh, repeater, but uh, getting in and out would be a problem. You'd have to haul it up there on a trailer with behind a Jeep or something like that. At any rate, uh, the road, Serpentine Road, gets a little narrower and it's a little bit lofty. And there's a couple of places there where it kind of resembles the JQS trail, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, down by rifle. Uh, and this is a view of the it's to the south, uh, southwest, I guess, looking at the right side of Chair Mountain, I guess. Uh, and here it is, uh, uh, Jerry uh, was with me on this uh, MKKTQ, and he took, he took these pictures. Um, 
and that's obviously my vehicle and, and me, but right here is the solar array that the uh, Kellys have been using. And they have behind this glass window here, they, they've got a box full of batteries and a uh, charger system. Uh, and it, this is of course their cabin. And the nice thing about it is they've got this overhanging roof. So there's no snow that gets on the array and the sun is just the right angle to, to uh, charge the uh, batteries, especially in the winter time, just right. So that's good. Uh, so starting with antennas, uh, this is where uh, Al and others came in and Chuck is involved in this. This is Chuck's antenna here that he uh, lent me for this particular project. Al lent me this one here, which I had to stiffen up in order to get it through the winter because there was just one quarter inch bolt on the face of this thing. And I, I did something like uh, routed out a, a hockey puck and did some other things. I can't remember exactly what. Oh, and then Jim Legg came up with a uh, an, um, power, uh, and then I came up with some scrap uh, guy wires and other pieces of angle iron and that kind of stuff, and, uh, uh, well, hardware uh, to do the rest of the mount. Uh, and this is what it looks like from uh, on the hillside. Now, it is mounted on the highest part of the... Uh, Kelly property, and it's right up next to uh, Serpentine Road, which is or trail, which is right down here. Uh, and then the Kelly uh, property drops off this way pretty sharply. So I guess you can't see the guy. Oh, it drops off this way sharply. Uh, that's the guy wire going uh, to the south. The base, uh, my uh, sons and I fabricated a uh, triangular base. I mean, you, normally when I put a tower up, I put in a yard of concrete, but uh, it's not too easy to get into this location. So this is a total new experience for me. Uh, it wasn't that much of a tower that I was putting up, so I didn't worry too much about having a huge heavy base, but I, I put a piece of triangle steel in here and then drove two of these uh, three of these form stakes in the ground about three feet uh, to hold the corners down and there's hinges here and here on the base of the tower and a stake here and an angle come on curse come on Get back. Uh, right here where it bolts on so it tilts over and then bolts on here uh, and then of course the mast is grounded with this green wire and i've got uh, three ground rods some of which are powered driven in all the way. I, I rented a healthy uh, uh, ground rod driver and this one just didn't go down. I hit a boulder or something. So I, I attached it right here and didn't bother cutting it off. We were, uh, we couldn't run a grinder up there because of the uh, fire hazard. So I, I like some stuff that needs to be cut off, but it's not gonna be done until probably next spring. And then inside the uh, Kelly cabin, uh, now this is the coax that's going up to the tower, coming through the base of this uh, back window. Uh, you got the duplexer here. Uh, and then uh, uh, the uh, repeater is here. This gray box is the analog repeater. This is a power distribution panel that I put together with switches. This is a uh, UHF uh, link repeater or a uh, transceiver, and it's uh, 448750 using the, uh, yeah, the tone squelch uh, at 100 hertz. And, uh, you know, you guys that are going to do this uh, Aspen uh, 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 All Star node, make sure that you got the thing uh, with tone squelch because you know I've probably made about every rookie mistake you can make putting this thing together and one of them was uh, on my uh, receiver the transceiver down here at the house I didn't turn on tone squelch and so you know I, I hung up the, uh, the bail uh, uh, node system uh, with just noise that was coming in every 30 seconds or so kind of things like that you want to avoid there's another view of the, the 
equipment from different angles. Of course, the Kelly cabin's full of stuff. Uh, and uh, the wires, the power wires run here and here underneath the rug over to the solar uh, uh, battery system. Oops. Yeah. Solar battery system. It's, uh, it's located in a box. They've got an inverter for their own house here. And then they've got four brand new car batteries, I think. And I, when I hooked up, I used this uh, heavy copper wire, black and red. And also they're fused uh, underneath this tape so that anything we did uh, shorted or whatever wouldn't cause a fire uh, and, and do damage to the Kelly household. Uh, and they have uh, this particular solar charger. Uh, and this is the back window where the coaxes come in. And again, I ran uh, grounds down here. Uh, this one's got a funny story. It started off to the right here. I was driving a ground rod in. It was eight eight foot ground rod, and I got it in four feet. That was like two years ago. And then this summer, when I'm up there, I was trying to drive it the rest of the way in with a healthy uh, uh, ground rod driver, and uh, it wouldn't go in and then I couldn't get it to go out. So I cut it off uh, and then brought the uh, other half over here and tried to pound it in. And I got it in just this far. And so I got the ground rod in in two places. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> I guess that's better than not being in at all, but uh, it's not the way I wanted it. This uh, ground wire goes up to the tower, by the way, and that's all interconnected. This one over here goes over to the service ground that the Kellys have, and their service ground is really part of their uh, generator input. They don't have they don't have uh, power there. Uh, and then another one goes over here to the other half of the ground rod that's sticking up there. And this is what it looks like. I salt it off right at the ground level, and it's in four feet. But you know, that was the best I could do, and I didn't want it to be a tripping hazard. So I, I uh, cut it off. And then uh, to hold the uh, guy wires on, I, I came up with uh, a steel rebar with, uh, they're located in here. I don't know if you can see it well or not, but there's one here and I was, uh, with this wire, I was hooking in another one because this guy was on a funny angle and I wasn't sure it wasn't gonna pull out. Uh, I'm kneeling next to the uh, serpentine trail, which is behind my back. And I, I want, put these snow stakes in so that the uh, guy at the top whose name first name is Chance, I don't know what the last name is, but he, he keeps it plowed all winter long. And I didn't want him to uh, take out my uh, uh, guy wire stakes. So I put snow stakes up there as a warning to keep away. And uh, here I am finishing up that installation that I started. The one goes up the top of the tower here, comes down here, and then there's the one that goes sharply down into uh, the Kelly uh, uh, hillside. And another thing, interesting fact is this stove that they have in the uh, second floor has a tendency to have like St. Elmo's fire when uh, lightning storms are in the area. And uh, I, they had yet to ground it, but I, I uh, did have a scheme put together to do it, but they weren't around when I was closing things up at the end and I, uh, I'm not sure how you get from the first floor to the second floor, although I see they've got electrical service coming up here. Uh, but at any rate, the ground's got to be hooked up somehow. Now, on my, on my end, I've got a uh, UHF link uh, that's hooked to my all-star uh, node. Uh, and this was an antenna I got from uh, Al again. Uh, which I'm about to replace, and I managed to mount this mouse, mast here <clears throat> on the balcony, and my ham shack is right behind this log wall, or not, well, behind the wall, uh, and this is the TYT, I can't remember the exact model name, but it's a Chinese uh, transceiver, 448.750, and it's uh, 100 hertz. Uh, and the, uh, this is the ground, my hand system ground, and the wires are just provided for background. Uh, this is the all-star node, if you're not familiar with it. It's a, a square box. Uh, 
and uh, this goes to a, a monitor that I'm using at the moment, but it's not necessary. This is a, a DB9 cable that goes over to the transceiver I was just talking about. Uh, this is the uh, Ethernet cable, and this is a USB cable that goes into a room light card, which is a sound card for this All Star node. Uh, this is the uh pi three that i have as, as a spare and uh this is the rim light card so this guy is the sound card this db9 goes over to the chinese transceiver and then uh, uh and yeah then there's a usb that goes over and connects to one of these uh, connectors here uh, and this is a new uh <clears throat> m squared uh, uhf yagi that i'm planning Putting there, and I think that's my last slide. Get out of here. And you know, somehow I turn, uh, stop share. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Clark, uh, how well is the path work between your house and um, the cabin? Is that uh, good and solid? How much power are you running to do that? I'm running uh, uh, Chuck on low power, and I and I, you know, you uh, you donated the antenna that that's beamed down, and it bounces off a chair mountain. So you've got almost a right angle bounce off of a uh, scattered ridge range, whatever. Uh, so it's hard to find a hot spot. It's all pretty much the same down in my house, but I do run it on low power. But uh, that uh, Chinese rig gets pretty warm during the net on Sunday night. <laughs> yep. Cool. Thanks. You know, thank you. I've got thank a, you everybody Clark, that, that contributed uh, labor and effort and, and equipment. And it's three years in the making. Clark? Hey, Clark. Go ahead, somebody. Yeah. I, I have a newbie question. Um, what's the difference between the All Star Network and the D Star Network, or is there a difference? I'm not the person to ask. <laughs> okay, all right. I, yeah, I'm, I'm using All Star. D uh, uh, Star is uh, is proprietary, and uh, All Star is pretty well available to uh, uh, anyone that can configure a uh, radio that goes into it. But D Star is, uh, uh, I. Think I think it's Kenwood, but I'm not sure. Uh, I had a D Star at one time, and uh, uh, it, it it works very well. But it just wasn't something that I was interested in. Uh, uh, D Star does have a, a, a is extensive system, uh, but uh, your I think your options of uh, equipment and uh, and hardware are are more limited than they are with the All Star network. I see. D-Star is totally digital, there you okay, go. and All-Star is straight analog. Thank you. So, so That's another the, thing. So, Clark, my question was, um, how's the two-meter coverage in the valley there? Um, can you hit it? Can you hit the repeater on two from your house? And uh, what are the frequencies that's on two meters? Okay. Um, the answer is yes, I can hit it from my house. And uh, yeah, I can just use a omnidirectional antenna and, and I hit it okay. Um, and I'll, I guess I'll cover, you know, the range that I know about the uh, repeater so far. And there was, uh, was two parts to that question though. Well, let me cover the, the range. So far I've tested it so that I know it works all the way up into, uh, uh, yeah. Daniels Hill, but I didn't have a chance in the summer to uh, when I was up at Lead King to try it because we didn't have the thing running until late fall. And I've used it up to the uh, in previous installations that were temporary. It, it reached up into uh, the Marble uh, Quarry area and over McClure Pass down to the uh, uh, the turnoff there to Vega Reservoir. Uh, what, uh, I can't remember the name of the road right now, Colbrand Road. And then it reaches down to uh, the turnoff at Avalanche Creek. Um, 
And uh, I don't know what the other, uh, what was the other part of your question, uh, Mike? Uh, the frequency of the repeater. Oh, yeah, it's uh, 146.760 and it's the tone 107.2. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I was... Hey, Clark, I, I, go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I, I just was wandering around the marble area there with just a handy talkie one watt, and I could hit it most of the places, especially a slow groove and barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important. <laughs> yeah, slow grooving in Beaver Lake, I'm sure it, it'll hit it really well. Any other questions? Okay. Mark, I have one before you go. You mentioned that was a Pi 3. And, yeah. Um, is that the Pi 3B or just the 3? I believe it was just the 3. I mean, it was bare bones minimum when I got it because I didn't know anything about it. I didn't ask for anything special. And, uh, you know, when I wanted to buy a spare, then I kind of figured out it wasn't a three plus or whatever uh, they're available. And, and uh, I, I don't have any problems with the hardware itself and the way it functions. So the problems that I have had have all been with either the power uh, supply, which I'm not absolutely certain were a problem, uh, and, and the internet. You got to have a decent internet connection. And if it's slow, you'll get all kinds of weird stuff that goes on at, uh, to make you think that the All Star is not very reliable, and uh, it's not going to be any more reliable than your internet connection. I can tell you that. Okay. The the reason I was asking is I was talking to some folks who had the same kind of problems you're describing, and they had a combination of slow internet and a Pi three. They went to a Pi four, and it fixed half of the problem. Um, and that was a little bit more horsepower, so that took away a part of the problem, but the internet um, speed was the other part. So is, I'm going to think about uh, experimenting with a Pi 3, 3B, and 4 as we look at the um, Aspen nodes, so that would be interesting to see. Yeah, you know, uh, last night, uh, well, this morning when I got up and I went upstairs and looked at uh, the monitor on my uh, uh, all-star node, there were uh, a whole, at least 12 different messages where I was logged in and logged off. And so something happened overnight. And I don't know if it's with the internet or with the weather or whatever was going on, but uh, those are the kind of things that I see right now in, in line with, you know, how well does the uh, uh, Pi 3 work? So I, I don't know why I get these things. And I do get, you know, I was listening to, last night to a conversation between uh, Phil and somebody else. And all of a sudden it just disappeared. And then I went and found I was no longer connected to uh, 45479, which is the Veil node. And I, no explanation as to why I got kicked off. Just these things happen. So I guess what I'm trying to say is the performance isn't perfect, but it works pretty well. Clark, we, we, we can only see the top of your head. Oh, you want me to make sure I can't, you can't see me at all? Oh, that much better. Thank you. Much Thank better. you very, Thank you very much. No, I was, I was distracted here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. The bottom of this thing is uh, the, Eric or somebody said they might have some uh, gear they wanted to talk about. Is that right? I do have a quick show and tell. Um, sure. Look up in the yeah. chat. Um, I put a link to an eBay uh, auction and I can share this real quick maybe. Um, let's see. Try that one. Oh, never mind. 
can't really do it if you look at if you click on the link in there you'll see the 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 auction page for it but uh got some new batteries for my uh my old uh gel cell finally uh i remembered i had it the other day and i uh, thought oh let's try it out and it promptly died as soon as i uh turned off the power supply and tried to keep the radio on so i picked up one of these actually i picked up four but that's another story um these are uh, lithium polymer batteries, um, or actually they're uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, and they come out of- I don't think you're sharing. Is uh, Jess, is, is Eric set up to share? Sharing, it's, it doesn't want to share, because I have to go into preferences and change a bunch of stuff, so I'm not going to do that. But uh, oh, okay. go into the chat, there is a link uh, that I put in there for an eBay auction. But Eric, anyway, I'll share it with you. This is- uh, I, and these are pretty neat. They're out of medical devices, and uh, they're uh, they're uh, pretty cheap, as you can see. They're normally, if you buy those new, they're about a thousand dollars new. But they're out of medical. Am I sharing it with you? Yes. Okay. Yes, you are. Okay. And uh, they're pretty nice. Uh, they're uh, forty amp hour batteries uh, with a third short peak to eighty um which is less than the battery i had before but it actually will run down because you can run them lower uh you know you, you can drain them further than you can drain a lead acid so you actually get more runtime out of these than you would out of a lead acid and the interesting thing about them is if you can if you daisy chain them together um they have a, a charge controller built into them um or a battery management system built into them and those two cables that are or actually a CAN bus uh, connection that you tie them together and uh, they, they will all communi communicate across when you're charging and discharging and keep, the, keep all the cells balanced and everything else and a really, really a good battery. Um, and like I said, you know, that's, that's a really good price and they're out of medical equipment. So they only use them for a certain amount of time and then they just take them out no matter what, because you figure if it's, providing you know backup power for somebody's you know um you know life depends on it and you probably want to keep you know get them out before you have a problem so uh you know but they're they're a pretty good battery um and we'll see what you know i just got them actually i figured i was going to get them next week but they showed up yesterday so uh that's why i uh, figured i'd show them off but um you know there's a couple of youtube videos about them and it's really uh you know, they seem like they're pretty good. So there'll be more to come. I'm actually going to build a, um, um, I <laughs> got a hold of an old rectifier and, uh, and inverter, uh, that somebody was, that we were scrapping at work and, uh, brought it home. So I'm going to build a, um, uh, probably 2000 watt UPS <laughs> with, with a couple of these, uh, strung up as a neg 48 system. So we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, uh, you know, if you're looking for a battery for a backup for your shack, that's probably a good one to consider. That's how it. many ampere hours? How many ampere hours? Forty for forty amp, uh, forty amp hours. But uh, you can peak them. Thirty oh, is at eighty, is what it says on it. Okay. You know, and and you can run them down to like thirty percent capacity, and uh, you know, like it's, they don't. Like they don't discharge the discharge is nice and even and then they drop off so um you're less likely like with a lead acid you're going to watch it you know the that power curve is pretty linear and this kind of keeps keeps the voltage up and then drops so you, you get a lot better runtime out of them so eric how do you recharge those puppies just you just give them 13 volts uh you don't want to put any kind of like a that you know they have a battery management system built into them so you just feed them a constant voltage you may want to limit your current you know uh just so you don't over 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 drive the current on them but for the most part you just you know you don't want to have a, like an equalization charge or anything like that if you have a if you have something that's designed for lead acid you do not want to use it on this but if you just have a regular power supply just feed it 13 volts and it's wow. it's not bad yeah. Thanks. No, that's a great deal. Wow. That's it. Okay, Eric. Thank you very much for your uh, contribution. And uh, 
By the way, everybody, thank you very much for allowing me to at least present the, uh, the marble repeater work that I did. I, I appreciate it being able to do it uh, this morning. Despite all of our technical problems with uh, people that didn't make it and all that, I think we had a pretty good meeting so far. Looking forward. Uh, Mark, real quick, Jerry just, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but Jerry hey, just hey. called me and couldn't get in. So I just sent him a link in. I don't know if he's going to make it or not, but that's just an update with Jerry trying to get in. All right. Hey, well, Clark, I can do, Clark, I can do mine. Okay. All right, Bob, go ahead. Um, uh, Jess, am I set up to share or not? Yes, just hit share. Okay. Uh, what this is is uh, uh, we lost audio, I think. Actually, we lost, uh, looks like we completely lost, uh, yeah, he, he just dropped off. You, you lost him all, you lost him all together. Hey, Bob, Cutter, he used up all the electrons he had. Bob, you're hey. muted too. Clark. Uh, you not muted. Clark, I don't think it's going to work. I just, I just died there, and I die for about two minutes, and then come back. But uh, I'll, either, if if I can't get through this whole thing, then I'll just stop, and you'll see that I'm not there, and uh, uh, we can continue on at the, the next meeting in December. But uh, let me start this and see if uh, I can get this going here. So you're in, uh, Bob. You're in twice. In the meeting, there's two. Yeah, people. Susie's, Susie's going to kill that. Okay, do you, can you copy me now? Do you, do you hear yep. me? Yeah, we got. Yes. Okay, do you see my shared picture? No. No. You will. No, no not yet. It's probably going to be a bandwidth issue. You, 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 uh, we, had, we had you in there. When you shut one down, you shut the one down that had the video link. <laughs> oh, and there's Jerry. Jerry's in. <laughs> Frozen, Bob. All right, now we're looking. I'm looking at uh, Richard, <laughs> and um, and that's it. So I'm going to mute. So hopefully Bob can say something, and we can get his picture back. Okay, Sue. Okay, why I see. Why don't you let Jerry, you let Jerry do his? And I'm just, I'm going to scrap it till the next meeting. All right, Jerry, unmute. Let's, let's see if we can get to uh, on here. Bob, it, is it that you can't share or is it your internet? It's uh, my, my internet's going up and down here. Okay. Because I have you so you can share, that shouldn't be the problem. No, that no, it wasn't the problem. It's my internet goes in and out, and then it reconnects and takes about uh, two minutes to interconnect, okay. reconnect. Okay. Hey, uh, Bob. K K I zero G. Dick and I were involved with a. Uh, program a week ago about the Russian woodpecker from 1980, 1976 to 1989 might make a pretty good program for here. 
I'll bet it was. I can remember, you know, that was uh, that was a, I was active on 160 in those days, and that was really a, uh, that was a that was a terrible source of interference and pretty fascinating. It basically, over the horizon uh, radar from the from the Russia, and uh, yeah, I bet that was fascinating. Yeah, well, it came out. It came to me through. Uh, Dick, AX6B, his club. Anyway, later, you might want to take a look at the West W. Dick, what is the... It's, uh, uh, the, the website is WVARA. It stands for West Valley Amateur Radio Association. And it's uh, it's just wvara dot org, okay. and uh, you can get on our website. Uh, they were going to post a uh, a copy of the uh, presentation, uh, but I have not seen it yet. So you might keep checking, or uh, when I find it, I'll make an announcement on one of the uh, uh, um, K zero RV nets. Great. Okay, I'd, uh, I'd enjoy seeing that. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, it was complete with pictures and everything. So, great. Can you, uh, can you guess what date it came on the air? Yes, it was constructed. Uh, uh, I was constructed in... Uh, it started in 1972, and uh, it was on the air in uh, 1976. Actually, it was July 4th, 17, 1976. That's right. That's right. That's right. right about the, right about the time I got my our license. anniversary. To coincide with our bicentennial. <laughs> So is uh, uh, Jerry, are you going to start your presentation now? You're on mute, Jerry. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can now, yep. Okay, uh, <clears throat> listen, I, I screwed up this morning here and uh, I was busy working on uh, so Medicare stuff here. Uh, that we're trying to do, and I completely forgot the meetings up to now, and now I can't find, somehow I can't find the file with those pictures, so I'm going to have to put that off to another meeting, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. If you need uh, do, do we have that? I'm available. Uh, if I have the floor here. <laughs> yes, you do, Clark. You got it. <laughs> okay. Do we have any other presentations that people want to make? Hearing none, uh, I'd like to make uh, one request. You know, uh, <clears throat> every year, no surprise, uh, we have elections. Uh, I think it's in December or January. And uh, I'd like to have you all think about... Uh, if you're interested in doing something for the club and continuing the wonderful activities that we have, especially in the areas of our meeting chairman. And uh, we also have a, a vice president that uh, is now residing in, in Florida and uh, maybe not. <laughs> I see Richard's laughing, but I remember when I uh, bent his arm to try to uh, get him to be vice president. So um, too embarrassed if I said I'd, I'd like to find a uh, an enthusiastic replacement, uh, maybe one with as uh, as nice of a re, uh, personality as the one we have. But uh, at any rate, uh, those things are, are coming up. And uh, by the way, I you know I I, I have no problem with running again for uh, president, but. Uh, I would certainly step down for someone who wanted to do a better job than I'm doing. Uh, 
and was enthusiastic to keep this club going because I, I think it's one of the greatest assets of this valley is is the, uh, the club and the enthusiasm that we're running, especially in these times. I mean, look how many people are here uh, under this uh, circumstance. I think it's fantastic. Uh, are there any other announcements that anyone would like to make? Uh, maybe Bob or somebody. Um, just. <laughs> hey, Somebody. Clark. Yeah. Um, on a totally different note, Jerry said he was struggling with his Medicare. If anybody wants help with their Medicare, I do that as a volunteer and I'd be glad to help you. You have till December 7th to be sure you're uh, covered with the right Part D drug coverage. Yeah, actually, Sue, uh, yeah, Pam and I are quite uh, aware that you do that, and, and uh, we have given you some, some thought on that. Thank you for making that uh, uh, volunteering. Okay, it's easy to do it yourself, but if you'd like some help, I'd be glad to help you. Sure, absolutely. Thank you very much. All right, uh, any okay. other announcements? Good, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone, and have uh, well. A seventy-three. Okay, uh, let's all uh, get together at Russo's for lunch then. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bob. Really enjoyed that presentation. Thanks, Clark. Too. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, oh. nice pictures from up at Marble. Well, that's Jerry uh, uh, Hittinger that did most of the uh, photography work, although some of them were mine. And it was, it was nice having Jerry along uh, on that particular day because I needed some help. Okay, I'm going to close the meeting. Mark, I have wait, wait, one thing. I'm scheduled to do the net this coming Sunday tomorrow. Jerry, is there an updated list of the net control stations? Will you asking me for a, an updated list? Yeah, no. I, I think I'm the last one scheduled on the that list. Is there? Will you be putting out another list of net control? No, stations? no, I don't think you were the last one. There's several more people scheduled. Oh, okay. I don't know. Maybe you didn't get the last thing that I sent out. Okay. I don't know. Well, well maybe when you get a chance. Um, uh, whoever's going to be after me will know anyway. I will but, send you a new list. Uh, I mean, the current list, okay? I'll okay. send you another copy of it. Uh, uh, Jerry, uh, I was under the impression, just in my memory, I, I think I'm net control tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to. I, I can't stay on this and, and find that list because it's in this computer. And if I block, drop it off, well, maybe I can. Let me I, I have do it. that. Hey. Let me minimize hey, it in here. And I don't know what it's going to do to Jerry, him. Bob said he's got a list. Uh, Jerry, I have the list. It's uh, Jess, November 15th. It's uh, Pat okay. Fitzgerald, KV0K, on the 22nd of November. It's Clark on the 29th of November. And December 6th is Brian, N0THY. So uh, that's it. All the way through December 6th, you have it scheduled out. Okay. Yeah, that's so, what I thought I had sent, but I couldn't remember who was exactly when. I really need to make a paper copy of that, I guess, and have it where I can get at it without losing what I'm doing on, the, on this computer. Thanks a lot, Bob. <laughs> Yeah, 73, guys. I'm going to go. 73. Okay, Cheers. 73. 73. 73, guys. 73, everybody. All right. Bye-bye, guys. See you all on the radio.